Breathing space includes mature content such as adult language, sexual situations, violence, and substance use. Additional sensory contact warnings can be found in the show notes. I ain't got no home to go to, I ain't got nothing to sell, but my stars will never leave me, even when I'm sold to hell. I was born under a blue sky, and I'll die out in the black, when I'm gone, don't no one mourn me, cause my debts will drag me back. NS84. Lock and mags now, Tower. Gotcha. NS84. Noodle shop around the corner. You are officially moored. Welcome to Delaney Station. Thank you, Tower. Noodle shop out. Uh, Tower. Your line's still open. I, uh, I gotta ask. Want the ship name? Yeah, it's, uh... No worries. Get it all the time, but the answer ain't fancy. We're a flying restaurant. We got flash noodles, ramen, bug's nest, you name it. Huh. Well, I guess it'll be nice to have someplace new to try on station. <laughs> well, come on by. We got some puff spinach linguine that'll blow your socks off. NS84, out. Tower, out. <sighs> hey, hun. I'll get the boiler started up for you. Thanks, beautiful. You ready to be back here again? I think so. We've gone a long way before coming back around to here. I'll admit, I kind of miss the place. There always was something wrong with you. I hope the noodles are good enough. That's your department. I just do the cleaning. And you fly the ship? Sure, yeah. And fix things when they break? I mean... Which they always do. It's an old ship. And you do a lot, too. Yeah. Cooking. And the finances. And the astrogation. The marketing. Although I'm pretty sure you interfere with the 8-vac. What? No, I don't. I never... I mean, every time you come into sight, you just... uh... Heck, if you say... Take your breath away one more goddamn time. I'm divorcing you. I will get a class six modular laser split saw and we will cut this ship straight down the middle. (laughs) 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 You'll do great. I wish I had your faith in me. Okay. We'll add optimism to my list of responsibilities. And worrying to mine. See? Division of labor. This is why we work so well. Speaking of, someone said they were going to get my boilers going. Oh, I'll get your boilers going, all right. (laughs) Hey, hey, later. (laughs) Those boilers can wait. We've got an appointment to keep. Yes, ma'am. Um, hello? Mrs. Novak? Oh, uh, yes, hello, Ms. Blake, correct? Indeed. Although we have actually met before. You were quite young, of course. I would not blame you for forgetting me. A number 316, right? Pumpkin ramen, split spicy and sweet. Indeed, that was my order. You were always so polite. But you weren't actually our Hephaestan judge before. We had an older guy. Ah, my predecessor. Retired about six years ago. His duties fall to me. In fact, this restaurant was to be my first assignment years ago. Imagine my shock when I arrive at Delaney Station to find this place gone. Long story. It is not every day that the only Hephaestan-rated restaurant in the sphere of influence of a significant celestial body goes walkabout. You understand, of course, why I had to rescind our furnace award. Naturally. Uh, Is that why you had us meet back here to be reassessed? Coincidence, I assure you, in both meanings of the word. The group's orbit made Mars the easiest place to get to, 
Have you changed your menu as well as your location since I was here last? Uh, about five years ago now. How much? Complete overhaul. My dad never stopped making new recipes, and menu was over 500 items by the time I took over. Some of those were fantastic, but it's intimidating for a new customer. I've been focusing on refining things. Here's our current offerings. I see. Only ten items. I mostly strive to execute the basics to a highest order. Best ingredients I can get, refine the preparation. I typically have to customize items from place to place because of availability of foodstuffs and local tastes. Sometimes even swap a dish in or out. Very interesting. Can I start you with something? Number one, please. Chef's Choice Flash Noodles. Can do. Um, you are aware that the Hephaestum Furnace isn't a public rating, correct? It is an internal tool for our executives and salespeople to identify establishments where we can, as you say, wine and dine clients. If it's private, why does everyone know who's on it? (sighs) It seems to leak with unfortunate regularity. We do try to prevent that. I just don't want you under the impression that if we were to keep you on the list, and we manage to keep it secret, as is our goal, that you won't see any additional public interest or accolades. It's fine, Miss Blake. Here are your flash noodles. Lovely presentation. Hmm. Yes. Hey, Cat. I'm going on station for a poke around. Do you need anything while I'm out? Ooh, a uh, cricket flower, if it's not too much trouble. Can do. Oh, is that the reviewer lady? Heck, this is Avi Blake of the Hephaestum Group. Ms. Blake, this is Heck. Howdy. Pleasure to meet you, ma'am. Oh, yes. Charmed. Miss, um... Heck, my, you're tall and with the, um... A very pleasure to meet you. Okay, I'm off. Good luck. That was your wife. (laughs) Can you believe it? I hardly can. Ah, yes, and she is a cyborg. I thought the two extra metal arms would make that obvious. Yes, yes. She is also a business partner. Partner in all things. Cybernetics of that nature are expensive. Did your heck incur much debt in her acquisition of them? Why would that matter? The true nature of my inquiry is to ascertain the reasons for your sudden departure from Delaney five years ago. If you were on the run from significant medical debt, then that would explain... No. No. No debt. Then... Why? Surely your operating costs are higher as a ship, and you miss so much income whilst in transit. It wasn't a business decision, Ms. Blake. It was personal. Between you and your wife? Wasn't my wife, then. Not quite yet. I'm gonna have to tell you the story, aren't I? I would just like to know, Mrs. Novak, uh, before I can give your restaurant our not insignificant business, I would like to understand. We had history. Too much history. I was working here for my dad, and she was working in the yard, shipbreaking. She was really good, too. And then my dad got sick. Quickly. And then it was just me. Hey, Heck. You doing all right? Uh, Can I get you to fix the damn reactor for me? The whole shop is running on umbilical power and the fees are fucking me over. Uh, Yeah, of course. Sorry for calling you. I just didn't know who else to... Oh, I'd be mad if you found somebody else. I I mean, I've been fixing this thing for my whole life. I'll be darned if I stop now. Okay, uh, you know where it is. 
I can't even begin to guess why it's on the fritz. I'm sure it's just the couplers getting carbon caked again. It happens every 18 months or so, because of the shop's low power drain compared to running the engines. Normally your dad calls me before... Oh. Right. Uh, sorry. It's fine. He's just dead, heck. I'm not gonna fucking fall apart at the first mention of him. Yeah, but... Don't have time for that. I've got a restaurant to run. Will you need to kill the dock power while you work? No. Good. Then I'm gonna open. Let me know when you're done. Okay. Uh, Give me a 288. Shit, Lefty. At least you're still coming in. Maybe this restaurant won't follow in no shit's footsteps. Ah, well where else on this godforsaken graveyard can a fellow get flash noodles like y'all's? I've been telling people, it's just as good now as when... Uh, uh, before. But nobody listens to old Lefty. Let me get your noodles. How are things in the yard? Ah, same as they always were. Dangerous, but paying well. We got a couple cruise liners on the chopping block that's got the whole place hopping like a moon rabbit. I know, they cast shadows. Half of Delaney won't see sun for months. Including us. <laughs> well, it's not like you ain't seen the sun before. It's nice to know it's still there, is all. <laughs> With any luck, it won't do anything exciting until we're both space dust. Then it won't be our problem. <laughs> Eat up, old man. I've got you up and running for the moment. It's the couplers, like I thought. I'll need a few hours of downtime to give them a proper clean. Is it okay if I come back after hours for that? <sighs> Shit. If that's what's needed, sure. Okay. Hey, Lefty! Heck! What's your signal? Five by five. You? Nah, can't complain. We could use you and all four of your hands on those whales we got going. <laughs> no thanks, Lefty. Nah, more's the pity. I'll catch you later. You can buy an old-timer a drink. Well, if you got whale money coming, Lefty, you can buy me a drink. I'll see you tonight, Cat. Good to see y'all are getting along. Don't give me shit, Lefty. I make your food. <laughs> Making progress? (sighs) When I'm done, you'll have couplers so shiny you could serve ramen in them. But it'll be a few hours. Is there something I should be, I don't know, fucking doing to prevent this? Well, if you could run the reactor at more than 10% power, it'd self-clean. This thing was built to push tankers into dock, not boil noodles. The shop hasn't flown in (sighs) void 50 years. We're basically a part of the station now. It's not like I'm gonna go take it for a spin. And I guess you're stuck with me showing up every so often. Sorry about that. Oh, uh, one of the damn boilers is sputtering. Again. Oh, I can take a look at that when I'm done here. Anything you can't fix? Lots of stuff. Sorry. It's okay. I'm sorry, too. If you want to talk... I'm fucking fine. I I know you are, but if you want to talk anyway... About what? Cat, your father died two months ago. Shit, I know. I was there. Uh, You reopened the shop that afternoon. Don't you need time to... grieve? Where was this concern when I got back from Ganymede? That was different. If you couldn't be my friend then, I don't see where you can start again now. I can tell you're worried. Oh yeah? I just... Do you want something to drink? You must be thirsty. Sure, yeah. Come on. Where are we going? Come on. Uh, 
Oh, stars. I knew your dad had a stash, but I haven't ever seen it before. What do you want to try? We've got everything from Fool's Gambetta to beer from the Trappists on Titan. I don't know. What's good? No idea. No shit spent 30 years building this collection, so everything in here is either very good or terrible, but in really interesting ways. It's like Russian roulette, but with booze. <laughs> I guess then we let chance decide. Good a plan as any? Let me grab my... What the fuck? It's locked. The old code isn't working. Cat? Let me just try... Damn it! Why in the void with this close right now? Cat! What? I just got a voice message. Yeah, so? It's from your dad. Okay, yeah. Me too. Automated. Triggered by the door code, probably. Fucking hell, old man. You can't even fucking well leave me in peace when you're dead. We should probably listen to it. I don't want to give him the last word. Can you hotwire the door? Uh, if I had my tools, sure, but they're back at the reactor. <laughs> Fine. Play the stupid fucking message. Okay, kiddos. It's probably a long shot that you two will go into the liquor safe together, but it's the only room I can program to lock, so it's my best bet. I've spent the last few years watching you two walk on eggshells around each other, and I'm fucking sick of it. I mean, I'm also sick with this myelitis shit, but mostly I'm sick of you two refusing to give each other closure. This is my moonshot from beyond the grave. It's been six years since you fell out, so now you got six hours starting from when the door locked to hash your shit. Kiss and make up, kill each other, fucking Ryan opera together. I don't care. But when that door unlocks, you two better have figured it out. But six hours is a bit long to- Oh, if you need to piss, there's a slop sink in the corner. Goodbye, and good luck. I guess we should talk, then. Fuck that. It's what he wanted. Yeah, well, fuck him too. Cat, I'm not giving him the satisfaction. I don't think he can- You know what I mean. Do you really hate him that much? No. It's just complicated, you know. I really don't. Sorry. Me too. You know, can we not be sorry anymore? What do you mean? Lately, every other word you and I say to each other is sorry. I think it's implied by now. <laughs> I guess you're not wrong about that. Okay, deal. It is officially established that we are both sorry. Okay. If no shit has us trapped in here, I'm at least drinking his liquor. Fair enough. Let's see. This says it's a Trappist Ale. Strong and dark. Drink warm. Good enough. You want one? Sure. Oh, at that rate, all these bottles won't last the night. <sighs> I invite you to go at your own damn pace. I think we're going to lose the furnace. Why? Why do you think? As far as anyone cares, No Shit was the noodle shop. He founded it, made up every recipe. The kitchen is... The bones of this place were moulded around him like a fucking tailored suit. With him gone, the magic's probably gone. I can't even keep the regulars coming. Why should the only Hephaestan Furnace rated restaurant near Mars be any good when it's just no shit Novak's worthless kid slinging the noodles? 
Oh, cat. Nope, don't say, oh, cat, like that. No pity, no sympathy. I'm not asking for that. Well, I ain't gonna tell you you're right. Especially about you being worthless. I know what's what. I got eyes. You're always four times smarter than me. You just don't test well. Well, Whose idea was it to steal that tug? It wasn't your fault we got caught. Neither of us could have expected that ranger ship was coming in to dock just as we were leaving. That was just about the most stern talking to we ever got. (laughs) You two are damned fortunate no serious damage was done. Elsewise, I would be forced to throw your degenerate butts in the who's cow. God, I remember there was a spit fleck in that man's moustache through the whole lecture. I couldn't stop staring. I was terrified it was going to fly off at any moment and hit me in the face. (laughs) I remember that. It was flapping with every word, but dang if it didn't hold fast all the way through. (laughs) I... I thought no shit was gonna turn me inside out when I went home. But after the rangers dropped me off, he just shook his head and told me not to get caught like that again. I mean, that's not terrible advice. It's okay. I've learned to stop expecting him to be better than he was. You asked me if I wanted to talk about it. About him. Do you? What do you mean? Heck, don't be obtuse. I'm not trying to, I'm just like this. No shit had his flaws, but if any kids came round, rare as that was, he always made sure they ate. And you basically lived at the shop for a few years there. I know. And I'm grateful. And you stuck around, keeping everything fixed and running since. Even after. No shit was at least your friend, if not family. Do you miss him? Yeah, I do. He he didn't... I, I didn't even know he was sick. He didn't want me to tell people. I might have said something to him if I'd known. That's probably why he told me not to tell. He wasn't very good with that sort of stuff. I'm not really good at it either. Me neither. I guess that should be okay then. What do you mean? Well, neither of us knows what's correct, so that means we ought to be understanding with each other, right? History indicates that's not how it works, heck. Yeah, well, just because that's how we've been doesn't mean that's how we gotta be going forward. We're grown up now, like it or not. Might as well act like it. You want to just reset? After 20 years of knowing each other? Sure thing. Put her there. People call me heck. I'm not reintroducing myself to you. I can't pretend like it all didn't happen. Okay. Then, how you been? I think I need another drink. Okay. This is... uh, Well, the label's gone. And it's green. Wanna roll the dice? Sure. Ugh. Tastes like licorice. Here. Hmm. Not bad. Help yourself then. I'm re-rolling. That one there is Martian ice wine. It's supposed to be very sweet. Ooh. It's got no place on Delaney then. I'd better drink it and put it out of its misery. Mm Hmm. Okay, that's my style. Damn. I wish I brought some food. It'd be a real proper date, then. Is that... Would you want that? Cat, I've had a crush on you since I was 14. Well, 
that was before. With how you acted when I got back from Ganymede, I figured that had changed. I acted like that because it's never changed. But then why... It's hard feeling like that and being close to somebody who don't feel it back. Our whole childhoods, it was just us in a station full of rough old yardies. No school, no work. We ran around like we owned the place. You were reading to me all the time, talking about everything. You always talked about leaving Delaney, going to school, getting a great big job out there, doing amazing things. But you never talked about me being with you. I wanted so badly to just keep being with you forever. It started to hurt. And then you left without saying so much as goodbye. That made it sort of easy. It hurt, but it was done. Final. And then you were back. And I could tell you were in a bad way, but I just couldn't. I needed it to be over. Otherwise, I knew I'd just go back to hurting. How was Ganymede? Good. Terrible. Amazing. Worst time of my life, I think. Really? Yeah. I mean, you got your scholarship. You got out of here. Isn't that what you wanted? I did. And then I failed. I don't believe that. If I hadn't, I wouldn't be back here, slinging noodles in my dad's shop. It was just all so different. God, the library alone. They have real fucking books there. You can hold them in your hands and turn the pages. Smell them. And the teachers, I learned so much, even though I... But my own stupid brain fucked it up. Everyone there was prepared and used to school. And there I was. Homeschooled kid from Delaney. First ever day in a classroom was college. I felt like an imposter. I kept meeting people who had been valedictorians or had interned with Taurus or Vista, Star Scouts, or they'd won awards. They had credentials already. I didn't feel good enough. And I didn't know how to deal with that. So I hid. And panicked. And stopped meeting people. I tried to keep my head down and just go to class, but then the panic started to follow me to class. And then I spiralled. Stopped going to labs, then lectures. Stopped leaving my room. I just froze. I don't even remember coming back. I was just here, all of a sudden, back at the restaurant. And you wouldn't talk to me. And I, and I get that now, I, I think. But I could have used a friend then. Cat, I'm so... Come here. It's been a while since you put an arm around me. Well, I got plenty to spare. You got... That happened while I was away. I never heard the story. You weren't hurt, were you? No, no. The circus came to the yard. You remember them. Same one was here when we were kids. Yeah, with the cow. Yep. And I went to see them, and they had this... I'm not sure how to describe it, and don't ask me to pronounce it. They had this doctor who could change people. They were amazing. And I always thought it would be cool to have extra arms. So I went and asked how I could get them, and the doctor 
looks at me and gets all excited and just starts taking measurements and talking a mile a minute. Said they'd do it. I asked the cost and they look offended. Said it was too interesting an idea to bother with money. Two weeks later, I had these. It took nearly six months to learn to control them, but I can't imagine myself without them now. It's good to have them. It's like when I started to work out and see results. I'd see myself in the mirror and like my old clothes didn't fit anymore and I'd just be like, yes, that buff cyborg chick is me. And I'd want to like punch the air in excitement. That's really cool. And they're very practical once I got good with them. I think I'm the fastest shipbreaker in the yard now. You already were, Heck. You think? People were already talking about you when you started. The old yardies would sit at the counter and tell me, you should see your friend work. She's amazing. They never told me that. Well, you know how yardies are. But even no shit talked about you. Said you had a bright future. Told me I shouldn't screw that up when I left. What? I wanted to ask you to come with me. I'd have gone. I know. Can you feel through your extra hands? Like, here. If I do this, what do you feel? It's different. I don't get the surface information. Like where exactly your fingertip is on my palm, or if your hand is cold or hot. Just the little general pressure and vibration. But there is feedback, like uh, if I squeeze your hand, like that. I can tell it's relaxed. The vibrations as the thumb rubs here tells me some of the skin is rough. You have calluses on your fingers. They're... really strong, right? Yeah. But I know how to be gentle. It... hasn't changed. What? How you feel about me. You said it hasn't changed. I did. And it's true. It's not too late. For us. <sighs> Don't play with a poor girl's heart, Cat. It's unkind. <laughs> I could say the same for you. When have I ever... I'm not saying you have. I'm saying... I'm serious. <laughs> And I want you to be too. I'm just a person, heck. With flaws and baggage and some scars. Some of which are from you, just as some of yours are from me. But there's never been anybody else for me but you. And if we're getting that reset between us, then I gotta at least try to... Mm. <laughs> <sighs> okay. I've been wanting to do that since I was 14. I wish I'd known you were such a good kisser back then. Is this for real? I'm in if you're in. That sound good? Hell yes. <laughs> <laughs> what? Oh, now you start swearing. I can swear. I've known you since you were a greasy little yard rat, and I have never heard you say worse than darn. Oh, okay, then how about this? Fuck. <laughs> oh, my stars, you're adorable. <laughs> Don't laugh at me. <laughs> then stop being so cute. I am nearly two meters of muscle and metal. Uh -huh. I can bench press. 400 kilos, mm -hmm. whole buffalo, a 15-ton cargo carrier in a single shift, mm. and 
and fix anything that's broke. And you're adorable. Deal with that. <laughs> you're one to talk. You said that if I'd asked before, that you'd have left Delaney. In a heartbeat. Do you want to go now? Well, we're still sort of locked in this liquor safe for a few more hours. After that, though? Uh, sure. Where to? I don't know. Just, let's go. Okay. I I've got some money. We can figure it out. You okay leaving the shop? Why leave it? I mean, it's here, and you want to go, so I thought... You said you can fix anything. Oh. Oh! There's a plan! That's not too crazy, is it? I mean, the noodle shop hasn't flown in a few decades, but most of the important bits are still here. It'll be good for the reactor to run harder. Yeah. We can make it work. You're gonna help, right? Of course. Whatever you need. Okay. This is exciting. I know there's some spare parts in the ancillary hold. I, I bet this won't even take all that much to- Hold your horses, cowgirl. The door's not open yet. All right. Go see if you can find something to drink that's sparkling. Then we'll figure out some way to pass the time. I've got ideas. Oh. Oh. <laughs> I hope you don't mind if I don't describe what happened exactly next. <laughs> Yes, naturally. <laughs> but when the door unlocked, eventually, we started working on the ship. Got her working, got her rechristened, got a quickie wedding from a travelling caller, and set out. Luna, Terra, Venus, Mercury, the belt, even terminal for a minute. Right now we're coming from the Peridoc at Arcturus. We haven't seen the whole system yet, but we're trying. I see. I understand. Hear what you wanted to hear? I... I am embarrassed to admit that my personal feelings may have been clouding my judgment before. Oh? When I was training for this position, this was my favourite assignment. I liked your food. I liked your father. I even quite liked you. I was very much looking forward to reaffirming the noodle shop's furnace for myself as my first rating. And when I arrived, the shop was gone. I was offended. I did not realize quite how badly until I was here oh, again. Miss Blake, I'm sorry. No, I see that was never about me, nor should it be. I am the one to apologize. Your food is excellent and you would be a worthy addition to the furnace registry. Thank you. <clears throat> I fear that I have already tested your patience too far, but before I take my leave, I must ask, would it at all be possible for... I know it's no longer on your menu, perhaps you no longer keep the ingredients in stock, 316. Pumpkin ramen. Split spicy and sweet. Coming right up, Miss Blake. Oh, yes. Oh, my God. Yes, please. <laughs> Who am I to deny an old regular? Now tell me, how have you been? What's it like being a Hephaestan judge? Oh, well, you know, it just never stops. I mean, I get to fly all over the system, but... Hey, beautiful. 50 kilos of cricket flour, as requested. What would I ever do without you? Hmm... A lot more dishes, probably. Can you do me one more favor? Anything. Can you get the boilers going like you said you would? They're, uh... I mean, they're right there and already a full boil. Other boilers, dear. Like you said. Oh. Oh. <laughs> yes, ma'am.
Thank you for joining us for this episode of Breathing Space. This episode, I See the Stars Are Here With Me, was written, directed, and edited by Scott Paladin. Heck was voiced by Amy Young. Cat was voiced by Ella Watts. Avi Blake is voiced by Emma Johanna Purinen. Lefty is voiced by Wyatt West. No Shit Novak is voiced by Vic Collins. With additional voice work by Scott Paladin. Our theme, Blues for the Black, was composed by Michael Freitag, with vocals by Jeremiah, and lyrics by Scott Paladin. You can find links to learn more about our cast and crew in the show notes, and more information about our show at our website, breathingspace.lawofnames.com. Breathing Space is a Law of Names production. The Back Lot Gently orbiting the planet named after the goddess of love, a thousand dreams are dreamed here every day. It's the home of many of the big players in the screen industry, including an increasing presence by the UDOs and countless independent studios hoping to strike it big. And then there's all the trades. Rigging, lighting, set building, and the artists who turn words into virtual or physical reality. And of course, rampaging hordes of actors looking for a part. Studio 17 needs three male presenting actors, large body type for a background conversation. Studio 22 needs five dancers with stage combat training, no feature specified for a zero-G musical fight scene. Studio 192 needs an athletic type female presenting and two more actors, no feature specified for a sports scene. A pre-screening of Palaces of Mars will be held tonight at 1745 in Black Box 34 with focus group discussion afterwards. But after a hard morning of trying out for parts and jostling for screen time, there's only one place you can come where egos and credits are left at the door. A-listers and U5 sit next to each other, and the only thing that matters is what's coming off of Sam's griddle. The first thing that hits you when you visit Sam's place is the location. We're in what's called the workshop, the area of the back lot where props, set dressing, and practical effects are designed and built. Sam's place is just around the corner from the main freight elevator, a prime location for anyone who needs to move heavy equipment up to the studios or back down for storage or repair. So the fact that this prime real estate is devoted to a diner should tell you all you need to know. The second thing you'd notice, it's crowded. Okay, starting lunch now. If you got an early call, come to the front. And take it easy, you're all getting fed. Anybody who's got an early call, come to the front. Don't worry, you're all gonna eat. So, yeah. I waited until after the lunch rush. Well... Waited is a strong word. I went in and had a burger. And some fries. And maybe a black and white. Flash, you sly bastard. Been a while. You on the back lots working this time? Uh, Just fucking around, like usual. Uh, 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 Don't answer that. When's Lighting the Furnace Season 3 shooting? Come on. Oh, um... I'm, I, um, I'm actually on hiatus from that show while I'm doing this. You know, it's nice to stretch my legs and get around the system. But, uh, I see some new faces on the Wall of Fame. You heard about UConn's contract buyout on Love at L4, right? So many recasts, it's basically a reboot at this point. Eh, you know, rules is rules. If you get the part, your headshot goes on a mannequin. That's right. Have you added more mannequins to the window since I was here? Nah. Been the same for years now. What about the maquettes over there? 
They move around a bit, you know, seasonal poses, whatnot. Uh, no new additions. Huh. Sorry, it, it feels different somehow. Boy, you kids. Everyone who makes it big and then comes back to visit says the same thing. You know, uh, one one smart fella, I, uh, what's his name, uh, S- Sally Dowdy or whatever, I had something about persistence of memory. All I know is, the same meal will taste ten times better to a hungry kid. The only thing that changes around here is who's sitting at the tables. You know, and uh, occasionally the menu, oh, when I get bored. But, uh, not the burgers, right? Never the burgers. You know, even though I'm sure the eight-back folks would like me to stop burning through the filters. So, you've told me the story of how this place got started, but let's go through it again for the audience. You were one of the first designers on the back lot, right? For the audience. Uh, I was one of the first practical effects artists on the station. Yeah, that's right. I thought maybe an actor, too, at one point, but a couple of 3 a.m. calls and a couple more times getting turned down. You know, after four or five callbacks, I realized I liked it better in the shop. I make the rules and the hours. You know, acting is a lot of hurry up and wait. I ain't patient enough for that shit. More consistent paycheck didn't hurt neither. Well, I'm sure everyone's familiar with your later work, but even your first major award for Make Makes Lament, folks in the industry were putting you up there with Phil Tippett, Robert Hall, and Ray Harryhausen. Ah, stop it. Ah, I, you know, I... It's just that standing on the shoulders of giants shit. You did amazing work. Don't discount that. Well... You know, you're bound to. You're in the business for 40 years. That's pretty amazing if you think about it. Yeah. Yeah, well, you know, I'm I'm grateful. For every day. So, how did all of this happen? Well, I, I think the idea came to me when I was cooking for my own retirement party. Right back there in the kitchen. I was packed and on my way out the door. Gonna go somewhere, you know, with beaches, environmental controls, keeping it at a nice 26 degrees. But then, you know, hearing all my friends talking out there, suddenly, uh, you know, a place on Luna, God for Finn, the Florida archipelago. <laughs> no, no way. Ugh, Florida. So I got to thinking. I got a decent bank account, a space that's still mine. You know, and all the free entertainment I could handle if I got bored. And some of the happiest times I've had here on the back lots were, you know, rap parties right here in the shop. God knows actors always need a good solid meal, especially the new ones on station. It can be hard starting out. Yeah, uh, anyway, I canceled my shuttle, I bought some furniture, I pulled the mannequins out of the trash, and I just started cooking for folks. You know, just lunch at first, yeah, testing the water. I didn't charge, not not at first. I, I just had an old hat in Bill's hand over there. The creature from Enceladus? Yeah, that's Bill. He was holding the hat, and occasionally people would put money in it. I didn't need it, but when I told people to stop, they said it was to cover the lunch of someone who couldn't afford it. I even put Bill's hat away, but... Some mook grabbed another hat off of one of the mannequins and put it in his hands. What am I supposed to do about it? I think people like to know that they can pay when they're able. But I, I never ask. You get folks from all across the station here, including some who could pay for a burger without even blinking. Yeah, sure. But sometimes those same folks are starving two years later. You never know when you'll get the part. And as for losing your spot, well, it's a 50-50 at best. But here, you know, a burger's always going to be a burger. You know, it's funny. I would never hear shop talk in here, except when someone gets the part. It's a small station, but there's plenty of other places to talk shop. 
Here, you put down your worries, you take off the mask, and you rub elbows like a normal goddamn human being. Talk about, you know, home, some of the places you've traveled. Or, hey, here's an idea. Just shut up and listen for a bit. N n no work talk. That's my rule. And everybody follows my rules here. Not even if they're looking for advice from you? Listen, I hung up my spurs a long time ago. I just run a diner. They can watch any of the movies I worked on. But I'm done with that. And with the Udios moving in, well, <laughs> I'm holding on to this bit of humanity as long as I can. Coming up, we'll learn the secrets behind Sam's famous hamburgers. Oh, no, he won't. I'm taking that secret to my grave, and anybody that hears its grave. Uh, oh, um... Uh, don't worry, don't worry. You know, we'll do, we'll do the meatloaf sandwich. How about that? Meatloaf sandwich it is. And the shakes? You're, you're breaking my balls here. Uh, fine, sure. We can do the shakes too. <laughs>